In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us therefore confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. Lord Jesus, you wept over the sins of your city. In our city, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division, jealousy and bitterness. On us, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Grant us peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, our refuge and strength, bring near the day when wars shall cease and poverty and pain shall end, that earth may know the peace of heaven. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Blessed Paul the Apostle to the Thessalonians. We want you to be quite certain, brothers, about those who have died, to make sure that you do not grieve about them, like the other people who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and that it will be the same for those who have died in Jesus. God will bring them with him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. For you my soul is thirsting, O God, my God. For, for you my, my soul, soul is thirsting, O God, God, my God. O God, you are my God, for you I long. For you my soul is thirsting. My body pines for you like a dry, weary land without water. For, for you, you my, my soul is thirsting, O God, my God. God. So I gaze on you in the sanctuary to see your strength and your glory. For your love is better than life. My lips will speak your praise. For, For you, you, my soul is thirsting, O God, my God. So I will bless you all my life. In your name I will lift up my hands. My soul shall be filled as with a banquet. My mouth shall praise you with joy. For, For you, my soul is thirsting, O God, my God. On my bed I remember you. On you I muse through the night. For you have been my help. In the shadow of your wings I rejoice. For, For you, you my soul is thirsting, thirsting O God, God, my God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Stay awake and stand ready because you do not know the hour when the Son of Man is coming. Alleluia. alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus told this parable to his disciples. The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were sensible. The foolish ones did take their lamps, but they brought no oil, whereas the sensible ones took flasks of oil as well as their lamps. The bridegroom was late and they all grew drowsy and fell asleep, but at midnight there was a cry, The bridegroom is here, go out and meet him. At this all those bridesmaids woke up and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish ones said to the sensible ones, Give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. But they replied, They may not be enough for us and for you. You'd better go to those who sell it and buy some for yourselves. They'd gone off to buy it when the bridegroom arrived. Those who were ready went in with him to the wedding hall and the door was closed. The other bridesmaids arrived later. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you solemnly, I do not know you. 
So stay awake, because you do not know either the day or the hour. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Stay awake, because you do not know the day or the hour. It's a bit unusual to attend a wedding these days with lots and lots of bridesmaids, but I officiated at one where there were indeed ten bridesmaids and flower girls. There were loads of them. I was put in mind of this parable when not all of them were organised enough to be at the wedding rehearsal, and then on the day some knew exactly what they were doing and some were all over the place. They all looked great though, and the little flower girls who in the end were walked up the aisle by one of the dads were charming. Well, in Jesus' time, weddings often happened in the evening, so it was important for the bridesmaids accompanying the bride to have oil lamps to light the way, and if you ran out of oil, you missed the party. Thankfully, the wedding I mentioned just now was in the middle of the day. The groom was early and the bride arrived on time with her whole entourage, bridesmaids, flower girls, her dad, flower girls, dads and all, and we weren't waiting around for midnight. Jesus, of course, isn't talking about weddings at all. He's talking about our faith and what this means in our lives and how we are prepared through our faith for what life and indeed death can throw at us. Stay awake because you do not know the day or the hour. It's oddly fitting that the parable of the wise and foolish bridesmaids comes today as we remember those whose lives have been lost in the two world wars and indeed any who have lost their lives in conflicts around the world. Those who died in the world wars were a mixture of those who were going reluctantly under conscription, those who went willingly feeling it was their duty, those who'd volunteered, those who were called up, and professional soldiers. I suppose they all knew at some level anyway that there was a distinct possibility that they would not return to the homes they knew, or that, if they did return, they might be irrevocably changed by the experience of the horrors of war. I wonder how you prepare for that. Stay awake because you do not know the day or the hour. Jesus' words were written down at a time when the early Christians thought he would return any moment, that judgment day was imminent. But it must have been tempting in amongst the persecution and systematic attack on early Christian churches to turn away from the Christian way, from belief in the Lord. Jesus continually reminds us of the need, whatever the distractions and pressures, to be prepared for his return. Whether this happens in our lifetime or not, we must indeed be ready. We remember at this time of year those who were ready, one way or another when the moment came, the moment of defence of country, people and freedom. This, of course, is not the same as being ready for the return of Jesus Christ at the end of time, coming in judgment, in glory and power. But perhaps we can not only be deeply thankful for the sacrifices of many on our behalf, but we can and should be challenged by their example, by their readiness to act, to put themselves in harm's way for others. How ready are we to face whatever life brings? In the parable, not only do the properly prepared bridesmaids refuse to share their oil, but the groom refuses to let the unprepared ones back in. This might seem a bit harsh, but what Jesus seems to be saying is that we cannot rely on others for our own efforts to be faithful, to be prepared and to be ready. When the time comes, it is our own faith, our own actions, our own preparedness, and no one else's which matters when we come to judgment. Stay awake, because you do not know the day or the hour. If we're not careful, our faith becomes a marginal part of our lives, something we do when there's nothing else going on, rather than a driving force. We may have no obvious persecutors, but the insidious influence of the 21st century world is in a sense somewhat worse, as it quietly and insidiously infiltrates our lives using up our time, our money, our thinking, and our attention. Those who died in the world wars stand for us as examples 
of how to stand up for what is right. The parable of the wise and foolish bridesmaids reminds us that we must have the same kind of commitment to our faith and to our Lord, ready to stand up for what we believe. It's not about being perfect. None of us is perfect, except the one who will be our judge, the one who stood defenceless before the powers of the world and of death, and still emerged victorious. No, this is about faith and about our commitment to it. It's about how we respond to that faith. When the moment comes, as it inevitably will for each and every one of us, as it has for all those who've gone before us, when the moment comes, will we be able to stand before Jesus without needing to rely on anyone else for our faith? Will the bridegroom, for that is who he is, close the door in our faces? Would we be shut out of the wedding feast? Stay awake, because you do not know the day or the hour. We believe in, in one, one God, God, the Father, the, the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we come before the altar of the Lord, let us bring to God our Father all that is on our hearts and in our minds at this time as we pray. On this Remembrance Sunday, let us bring before God our prayers for the world, the Church and all his people. May they be blessed with great faith and remain strong disciples of Christ throughout their lives. We pray too for our community leaders, Elizabeth our Queen, Justin, our Archbishop, Sarah, Bishop of London, and Jonathan, our Bishop. Guide them to lead in your name. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We remember today, O Lord, all those who have died in any kind of war throughout the world. Those soldiers who perished in battle, as well as innocent men, women and children caught up in the horror of conflict. Today we remember especially those victims of the two world wars, including those close to us and those from this parish. Let us pray for those who came home with terrible injuries, both physical and psychological, and those whose loved ones never returned. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for all who suffer in body and mind. May they know your presence in times of uncertainty. Show us when we can help and give support to others through the next period of lockdown. Guide us towards kindness and an understanding of the difficult personal situations people find themselves in. Let us give thanks for all NHS staff who, yet again, are having to face an unprecedented workload in extremely difficult working conditions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. On this day of remembrance, our hearts and prayers go out to all who mourn the loss of someone they have loved. Give us the strength to honour those whose memory we cherish and those we will never know. Help us to lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world and grant us the grace to pray for those who wish us harm. As we honour the past, may we put our faith in your future. Lord, in your mercy. 
hear our prayer. As we are now unable to physically worship together for several weeks, let us pray for our own virtual community here at St Anselm's. Let us remember we can be there for each other, albeit not in person. Let us give thanks for all those who make this place what it is, for the sense of community and continued acts of kindness shown by our fellow parishioners. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bring us all to your heavenly city, to the joyful gathering of thousands of angels, to the assembly of your firstborn, to the spirits of the saints made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that promises peace. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers, prayers for, for the, the sake, sake of, of your, your Son, Son, our Saviour, Saviour Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. We are all one in Christ Jesus. We belong to him through faith, heirs of the promise of the spirit of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It'll become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It'll become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that this my sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. Lord, we are united in this sacrament by the love of Jesus Christ. Accept these gifts and receive all the faithful departed in the glory of your Son, who is Lord for ever and ever. 
Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you, a holy people. And now we give you thanks, because through him you have given us the hope of a glorious resurrection, so that although death comes to us all, yet we rejoice in the promise of eternal life. For your faithful people, life is changed, not taken away. And when our flesh is laid aside, an everlasting dwelling place is made for us in heaven. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name forever, praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, might heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in, in the highest. highest. Blessed, Blessed is, is he who, who comes in the name of the Lord. Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. again. And so Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, the apostles, the martyrs, Anselm and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour has commanded and taught us, so we pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though, Though we, we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace.
Behold, this is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, Lord I, I am, am not worthy, worthy to receive you, but only, only say the word, and I, I shall be healed. Body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. God our Father, your Son is our peace and his cross the sign of reconciliation. Help us who share the broken bread to bring together what is scattered and to bind up what is wounded, that Christ may bring in the everlasting kingdom of his peace, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we, we thank, thank you for feeding us. us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the Church, the Queen, the Commonwealth and all people, unity, peace and concord, and to us and all God's servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.